these big, you know, Vikings and Monterey's and Jim Smith's. And then I had my boat that I built, put it right in there. And you know, looking up and down the dock, I was pretty intimidated. But by the end of the tournaments, we held our own. We went over five in the Treasure Peak tournament, which really pissed me off because that's a tournament we should have won. And then we tied for third in the Mount Billfish Championship. And um, went five for five on our own. So first we went over five, and then we went five for five. But it sure did feel good, you know, for, for that to happen. So we named that boat the uh, annual cycle. Some of them may be on a three-year cycle, six-year cycle. Every five or six years, our inner coastal and our new river gets so slap full of fish that it can't possibly be the same thing going on every single year. That strain of fish comes through four or five years apart, and it's just fishing unbelievable. And it's that way for every spot going up and down the coast with these crazy carp. I mean, it's a, they're a weird fish, you know, and they do a lot of travel, a lot of eating. But I think they're so old and they come from so many different parts of the Caribbean, the strains are different. And we get a strain that sits in our inner coastal. That's a year and a half day I can hang out by the house and I don't have to drive to my hand here. <laughs> those, those are my favorite fish. But, uh, you know, other years it's, it's totally different. There's years where government cut works so well and um, you know, you're fishing all over the same way. And you swear there's not a fish in all of And six miles down, you know, to government cut, they're in there, it's like over grain. You can't even mark the damn bottom. And, you know, so it's not the same fish, same thing every year. I think the sailfish are that way too, but they don't fish full enough to. We used to have them that way in uh, in a port, mm -hmm. uh, between the first set of markers and the next set of markers. You go out there at night, <coughs> starting in January, <coughs> December, January, February, and <coughs> you didn't mark them solid. They, they had a whole port full. And then they did all that big dredge project to deepen everything and they dredge all the way up to Danny, mm -hmm. and they don't stack up in there anymore. I mean, I used to get 20 fish on on uh, pallets. You're, you're so right on the ball with that. I never had to leave Fort Lauderdale to take somebody tarpon fishing for about eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. The tarpon fishing and the snook fishing here was really good for a lot of years. And when they dredged, between that type of dredging and then what we've done to the rest of the intercoastal with the, you know, with the uh, seawalls and everything. The other big thing too is these big yachts that are in Fort Lauderdale. There's no place else in the entire coast that those big yachts are moving around every single day. All through the Los Olds Bay areas where the canals opened up used to have seagrass in them, you know, a lot of blue crabs, things like that. That's all mud now. That's all mud. Those big boats stir up, silt up the grass, any type of vegetation. Basically, sometimes boulevard to the port. It's dead as a door now. I mean, there's places that, you know, as a kid, you can catch fish and, and fish you know, day in and day out. And they're just not there. And shrimp don't come through on the winter and whatever place like they, you know, like they used to either. So you hit it right on the head with that dredging. Go back 15, 20 years ago, just the hot water canal alone used to support three guys Mark Proba, uh, John Glorio, and Ron Mount. They used to sit there day in and day out. They would support three guys that one little hot water canal. Yeah? So, yeah, the fishing is definitely getting covered. How far up that canal are you going? Depends which government official you talk to. It's more like that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Never got checked on my big boat. Never seen another big boat get checked. But when I'm fishing in my 20 foot tarpon skiff, you know, I'm wearing my, my hat on and my dirty t shirt, I'm getting checked one in three trips. Often two and three times a night, in the same night. You get stuck more productive fishing. <clears throat> On any type of incoming tide, you'd be more productive fishing deeper areas. For instance, if the tide's coming in in, uh, in Pullover, for instance, the fish are going to be in the deepest part of the inlet, and you're going to want to fish the incoming tide kind of in the deeper channels. On the outgoing tides is when we want to fish basically, you know, any, any what I call funnel spots, bridges, any type of places, corners, and intercoastal where, where the tides, you know, funneling into a small area and you're getting, you know, a lot of, you know, rip and currents. So, for instance, the tide's coming in, and I'm fishing hull over, you know, I'm not going to go to Sunny Isles Bridge or Broad Causeway and, you know, fish the shadow lines necessarily. Where I want to be is kind of in the mouth of the hull over, fishing the deepest parts. Also, want to fish out on the beach in the sand. You know, as the tide starts to flow out, then I want to come inside the inlet. And then I want to fish in any small passageways that are opening up into a bigger passageway. Both tarpon, smoke, permit, you know, all those fish that are eating the, the shrimp and the crabs that are coming on the outgoing tide, almost all of them are going to set up where the tide is, is fading. So, for instance, you take a hull over in it's a small little inlet, you come out and it funnels open and it gets broad and sandy on the sides. Okay? Those fish are going to stage up where the current slows down, and they will come out of the inlet and they kind of fall into that sand. And those fish will, will stage up, you know, in that area. On the outgoing tide, that's when they're going to come in and they <coughs> sit in those shadow lines and, and fish for that. I did, a, uh, I did a video with the Florida sportsman guys. Um, down in Miami, and uh, it's on their uh, YouTube page. But you'll see, it's, it's so plain and simple now that you, know, you ask about the tide, but you'll see as the night progressed, where we were first hooking the fish at high incoming tide to the end of the night, where the tide was bottoming out, and, you know, sitting inside by the city. But it's, just, it's, just, it's real plain and simple. That Ever fish up near Hillsboro Inlet at all? No. 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 Port Everglades, Port Everglades in the south, and then everyone's. I brought you guys from uh, Lumber Club Sport Fishing Shirts. Oh. Yeah, I so to I got extra larges and larger. Oh, you definitely get anybody back next year.